thank you, Sarah, for um, joining me today on um, on here on the channel. <laughs> um, to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I just I I don't know how the best to introduce you because obviously we we've met so um, we actually met in Uluru and <laughs> I just felt like contacting you and I felt like. Um, speaking to you about it like a few things because i i know that you you do have a lot of um under understanding of what um what is happening and because you work with energy so you have that depth and like most women would do i would say like un understand the emotional value of things which is i could say the ultimate um aspect of um you know of energy like how we feel things is very important so and you're very intu intuitive so you understand these things and um, yeah I just wanted to have a talk to you about all those topics like um, you know how, how we can empower ourselves in a um, feminine way you know that's not to say only women are involved but just to bring you know that power that we've all got here yeah, within the divine so yeah <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's what I do for for a living um, at this time. And um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm Sarah. I am a um, massage therapist. I'm a nutritionist. Um, I also work with vibrational medicines. I make products under Rosa Temple, and I also teach energetics. And um, I run events. Um, I hold online courses and uh, regular meditations for the last ten years. Um, and obviously I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with people, uh, massaging and doing a lot of, um, energy work, um, for the past 16 years. So yeah, I've been doing it for a while and still learning on the job yeah. and, um, and, and yeah, so I'm just at that point now where I'm able to pass on some of the, the knowledge that I've, I've learned and observed and, um, just help people along their journey wherever they're at. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I like that because, um, yeah, you're you're more about like guiding and helping people to empower themselves rather than you know just trying to get people to, uh, you know, worship you or something like that. Not as a <laughs> guru style thing. You know, you're you're very much about sovereignty and and empowering and you know finding that place within yourself. So. Um, yeah, I think that's very important in times like this to remember that we do have choice always. So it does, um, we, we do need to claim responsibility as well, right? Like, um, oh, completely. Absolutely. <laughs> We've all created this. This isn't, hasn't just happened. Um, we have definitely created this. So I just help people um, wherever they're at and helping them to acknowledge um, and encourage a broader perspective um, which helps them to feel more comfortable and safe in their bodies in on the earth and help them to work through a lot of family lineage uh, traumas that we all hold inside which seems to um, create our worlds so right now we're just clearing a lot of collective stuff and it's it seems really chaotic, but it's just brought it all to the surface. There's actually nothing, um, there's nothing wrong with the what is happening. This was literally the best way that, um, obviously a lot of people are experiencing a lot of hardship and it's very uncomfortable. Um, but what I really do feel and what I keep getting guidance of is that this was the the best way to ensure that all of us get through this. This isn't about leaving anyone behind. This isn't about leaving any part of us behind. It's about bringing unity and unification to all aspects of ourselves because we are all in this together, which is the catch line that has been going around. <laughs> um, but we just, we don't ex actually comprehend how important that truly is um, when things turn into hashtags and and catchphrases we we lose the essence of it um so like it's all about our perception so like for example whenever i see the words like stay home um i actually think stay in your body 
So it's yeah. just like this little like every single time and like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. we are trying to get into a situation where we're all acknowledging that we're all equal and we all are important and sacred and we all have all of this inside of ourselves. It's just it's literally right. just brought it all to the surface. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I feel that because I think that's the um it's kind of like the unveiling of things right now because we have been as a society so focused on the outward world that we forget our power inside, which is sad, like and, and we do create we create that world, you know, we do because we um we accept it you know and we don't think for ourselves how how we can create ourselves and um just by doing that we give our power away so and i liked what you said about the stay home thing because actually our body is our home you know and we have to remember that so it's a good thing you know um yeah it's a good thing that it's happened this way and not um you know, some really bad, it, it could it could be bad, it could be really bad, but I think that um, as a whole, um, where we're at, we're just really at home, you know, and I mean, of course, a lot of stuff is surfacing, like you said, but essentially, we're not in any immediate harm, which is good, so we've got time to reflect, so, and bring up all these things that you know, that needs to come to the surface, basically. They need to be, you know, um, it needs to come out so that we understand um, what what that essence is, you know. We can't just um, let people take that and, you know, without understanding our power in that as well. So it's really important. Yeah, yeah and... Like we have been in a situation where our energy is being taken because we couldn't we couldn't see um, at all, and now it's all really coming to surface. What what was actually already playing out, and now that it's more in our forefront, we're we're starting to actually acknowledge the situations that we have been in for a really long time, and actually bringing it to the surface so we can start really shining light on it and really start dealing with how we are creating this, how we have collectively created this. And, you know, people are having to be forced to stay at home with their families, the, which is usually our most triggering state. And we're helping people, we're helping each other to unearth a lot of, um, a lot of harsh realities that have been there for a really long time but we just have not seen it because we've had this facade of a man-made reality um, with all of our energy and focused in one direction while all this other stuff is happening behind the scenes. And a lot of Indigenous people around the world have known what has been happening behind the scenes for a very long time because they've been in an unfortunate reality with that and now we are starting to see what exactly um, is happening to whatever degree that we can actually handle it at this present time. So like this has always been there. We have had um, our rights taken away from us for a really long time. We have had these situations where we are not in um, in the the control center of our bodies mm. and of our of the way that we work with with natural law or with with this world for a really long time now we're actually starting to just see it and this is only one layer of the onion like if you really want to know what's going on go and sit with elders go and be with the guardians and the wisdom keepers and because they have been watching this entire time um we're the ones that have been distracted we are the ones in the most dis-ease within ourselves because we've fallen out of natural law we've fallen out of the medicine of this earth which is what we're here to experience we're not here to experience the newest fucking iphone and all this stuff which has its place and it is something that we have created so it is a part of us and it is a part of our life force and we do give it life and that it needs to be respected but it is also it also is going through its own process of discovering its own sovereignty 
and its own ability to receive love and to be like if you actually sit with your phone and put it and actually you know how people do it with oracle cards and they sit yeah. with oracle cards and connect with the energy of it or they connect with a crystal mm-hmm. do it with your phone and actually see what comes up that's interesting mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I've done it in an event before and everyone was blown away of the abuse that they've given their phones. And the conversation back was a lot of, um, um, you say that you need me to do all this stuff, but all you do is give me shit. And like, I, and having this, um, wow. if we, focus enough energy onto something it brings it life it brings it consciousness it gives it life force because that's what we do we're creative beings um one lady um this one beautiful lady actually said that she connected in with her phone and just felt the the presence of it and started connecting into its language and it said back i really didn't like how you threw me into the bush that one time when you were so frustrated (laughs) Just trying to do what you asked and then, then it wasn't working and you took it out on me Aww. and <laughs> we're all laughing um you know it's something that we have birthed into this world whether we agree with it or not um it is it is part of our creation um and that goes with um 5g and everything that we have created here um it's not necessarily and this is what I do with people. I try to give them different perspectives to take the charge out of it, to take the attachment out of it um, so that they're not so fueled with anger and, um, and bringing up their own things rather respecting all parts of the whole. Um, and 5G is such a hot topic right now. And it has been for like a decade. We just haven't. And now is when they're really starting to, to put their stake into the land and now we're starting to see what it's actually doing um and how many how little say we've actually had in all of this um but anyway um looking at something like 5g for example um the the idea behind it isn't necessarily evil it's just that the motivation comes in, the intents come in, the the way that the technology is created comes in, which is not in alignment with natural law of this earth, which means that it feels like such um, the the way that the energy of it works works really jaggedy, really mm-hmm. it feels really out of place, yeah. and that's the way the waves work, whereas the natural waves of this earth flows like water. There's no hard edges and it feels comfortable. It feels safe. It feels like home. Whereas you've got something like this. Um, and so the, the idea of connecting people, if that is the intention, then they've just made really shoddy um, technology. And it hasn't been approved by the whole in the way that we would agree with it. And it does not flow and is not in sync with natural law. And that's why it doesn't feel like it fits here. Mm. Um, But then you have other people attach different intents onto it and different realities onto it in different worlds onto it. And then you kind of have the situation that's happening now. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, what you said, It does come in sync with the scientific research as well. So it's like exactly the same thing that what you're saying. And um, it is just a different perspective, like you were you were saying. Like I think I think it's very important to really claim ownership of, you know, responsibility. I mean not ownership, but responsibility of the world that we're in. And I like the way that you're thinking because you're you're thinking in a to, like in a total sense where um, we're in a world and all these things are here but we also created them just by being here and um, you know whether we like it or not like you said they are here anyway so what do we do about it you know and just the way that you worded it was very empowering which is good because I think there is a lot of fear and you know ultimately we can't be controlled without fear. 
we cannot be controlled without fear. So if we empower ourselves, we strip away that fear. It's not about, um, you know, just coming to a place where everything is love and light. Of course, we, we want peace. We want love. We do. That's the ultimate goal. But it's like to get there, you really have to dig in the roots and you have to go down really to get yeah. to where you want to be. Otherwise, you can't just skip straight up. It doesn't. You know, I've tried it. It doesn't work. It's like, you know, I just want to, I just want to do my thing, and you know, it just, it doesn't work because you're not assessing the roots of the reality, and that way you can. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Deep reflection that we don't look at our own roots. We don't look at where we've come from. We've all been dismantled around the world with a lot of our traditions and lineages being cut off from um, where they feel most comfortable. Um, but at the same time, we're getting called back to lands that we, we are learning from, where we are discovering and where a lot of medicine lies within the earth and within observation. And every land has different ways of experiencing medicine. These healing this healing ability that this world this, this world has that is so unique to this planet. There's nowhere else in the entire universe that's like this place. Mm -hmm. And no one knows why we're here. And if people say that they do, they're shitting themselves. <laughs> they have no idea. And um, because as soon as you know, then you've limited the ability to, to learn. That's right. We're here to learn. Absolutely, yeah, we're here to learn. It does, um, yeah, look, Earth, I mean, Earth is a, like, it's a living library, you know, that's that's what Barbara Massiniak talks about. It is literally, you know, you learn so much when you connect and you're like, well, <laughs> you know, it's Earth, it's Mother Earth, she's, she's actually speaking to us, she's trying to get our attention, she wants us to connect, you know. And she's just waiting. She's just waiting for us to um, be there and hold that stillness, you know, and be able to accept all that, you know, energy and frequency and learn from, you know, everything that, that we absorb so that we have a place to create from that, you know. It's not just just absorbing everything and leaving it. we gotta, we got to integrate it somehow, right? we got to say, like, yeah. 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 Absolutely. And... If there's anything that I've learned from the earth is she's damn patient. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> because, and, and that's okay. This will take as long as it needs. Um, and integration is extraordinarily important. And every single time that you have um, a self revelation and an experience that alters your life dramatically whether it comes from something that is so painful or so something so blissful your your insides your system needs time and grace to integrate it into yourself otherwise it feels like you're um, on a very rocky roller coaster yeah yeah exactly yeah you've got it you've got to be able to yeah sort of you know, because we, we've been we've taught to compartmentalize so much stuff, you know, in our brain, like section it here, section it there. But in actuality, like, it's got to be more fluid, like you said, you know, like water, it's, it's fluid and we're, we're fluid beings. So we need to just sort of keep that flow in us rather than um, trying to segment it. But really, but really try and, you know, to have that flow, you gotta, you got to integrate all that stuff so that it doesn't get stuck you know that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah it can be hard but <laughs> I think so. yeah. yeah i like the way you think sarah <laughs> thanks i'm still trying to figure it out like every other person and i wouldn't be here if i wasn't trying to um but i've just I've just observed a lot and um, this time in isolation um, has brought up stuff for everyone um, and I'm actually going into more of my roots of um, like being in the garden more I've been 
learning from sprouting seeds and um and watching things grow like one of the first tomatoes started growing today which was i was so excited i was like <laughs> overly excited uh we've been inside for too long um but i sprouted an orange seed and i spoke to my grandmother and she was like you did what that's really good and I was like yeah like I'm trying to because all of my ancestors are actually they're farmers they're um my ancestry and they were um, farmers so my ancestry is Maltese Maltese yeah wow so both both your parents are from Malta or um they were born here but their parents were born in Malta oh that's cool that's beautiful yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's interesting yeah my my father also had um because he's kurdish his family is from um eastern turkey so i mean traditionally yeah he was raised he was born in istanbul but i mean that side of turkey is very um like it was sort of like anatolia like very old turkish farming and they had that sort of stuff <laughs> It's very well, it's the fertile land. It's the fertile strip. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's where a lot of the wisdom lies. It's where a lot of the we learn so much of our magic through um, observing this world because it's a complete reflection of ourselves and we're trying to learn ourselves. And so by watching and observing natural law and every land um, has their own medicine and it's and um, expresses it in its own unique way um, and you know my magic comes through working with plants in all of their forms so um, I am a nutritionist so that's what, like that's the more like physical like work kind of side um, but the the way that I have learned is through observation of different lands and in the different ways that they work with with plants um i'm also like an aromatherapist and with vibrational medicines it all comes through um observing and listening to the the medicine that is is the plants i like that i work with um i like i've been working with crystals for a while and i think it's quite similar to what you're saying like yeah you gotta listen and you gotta um you can always put your intent it's it is a relationship as well you gotta listen and give the intent as well but to get the best out of it is to really fuse like when you fuse both of those aspects and you realize the magic so you 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 try you try and do things for the better for the ultimate good of everything but then you put your intent as well and then it does it, it forms like some sort of magic there you know like it, it's the power of its own i guess you know like it's the source energy or you know, the divine yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> yeah that's cool i'm into aromatherapy too but i don't know i have only i've only got a few i've got lavender oil and rose oil but they work they, they're quite good <laughs> Yeah, they're extraordinarily, you could call them like feminine um, plants. And uh, rose is in, an exceptional oil for for grief, for the heart, um, for any kind of loss. For um, I've, I've been working with rose, like rose being rose in all of its forms for a really long time. And the rose is symbolic of the feminine um but the way that it does it is we haven't really seen that yet or it hasn't really been um recorded yet um because we don't have the technology to do so um but the rose frequency is such a powerful um supportive energy that we have on the planet that a lot of indigenous people have been working with for a really 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 long time because it's 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 kind of like the womb it's the it it has this ability to hold you and when you look at it from an energetic perspective the way that it works within your physical energetic system um is 
it helps to heal the nervous system. It helps with the, the connection from one synapse to another. It helps kind of like, it's like a buffer. It's like, it just, it's kind of, it just, it holds you while you're trying to remember your own grace, while you're trying to remember your own love for yourself, for others. And it's, it, it creates this beautiful grid of support that is just straight up feminine. Like it's, yeah. it's incredible. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I've heard a lot of esoteric like stuff about the rose and there, there are obviously people and um, that really just delve into the, all that stuff that you were talking about. And um I did have something to say. Oh, yeah, because there, there is a, a physicist, uh, I think Dan Winter, that talks about the fractal reality. And so, yeah. I mean, obviously a rose is a fract. Like if you pull out the uh, petals, you know, it's a fractal mm -hmm. reality, which is what we are and what we're, you know, what the universe is, you know. So I think the rose is a good symbol of that. I haven't personally, but I love roses as well. I haven't personally worked with like the actual rose itself, but every time I see it, I mean, there is something so divine about the the flower. It's just, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> like it, it's, yeah. yeah. Something um, that you can do at home. Um, and I've done this at an event as well. It was actually really cool. Um, got everyone to sit down in a circle with the lights out and uh, with their eyes closed, pick up a rose, uh, which is always fun because there's thorns. Um, <laughs> but, but that's also part of the learning, part of the experience. Um, not everyone goes for the thorns, like others would go for the, for the softness. And without opening your eyes, um, turn on those inner eyes and turn on, the, turn on your, all of the focus onto your other senses. And actually start to listen to the messages to the wisdom of the rose and how it's interacting with you um and half the room's always in tears because everyone has like, a, sorry a lot of people have these very um inner memories of being with their grandmother looking after roses like that's actually quite a common thing and or being with any of the women in their family um looking after roses or being with roses um and that it, like pop puree and all that kind of stuff like having deep connection to your lineage through roses like i actually see it a lot of the time um especially with that exercise so yeah do something like that like find a rose and um, some people pick up like I wasn't ready to be harvested <laughs> from the rose. Um, that comes up sometimes, but it's like holding and because some people are drawn to the thorns because they're learning how to um, turn on their own perceptions and their own um, protective systems um, and others are yeah just reminded of these beautiful memories um from childhood oh that's amazing it does, yeah. it does contain the feminine definitely like you would say like yeah. The, yeah i can see how that how people would get emotional because yeah i mean it's such a long-standing symbol and flower that it would have been generationally you know there for sure I mean, it triggered me as well, just then. I was thinking about my grandmothers because I, I never really spent time with them, but I felt their presence when you were talking about the rose because I think that they both would have, you know, they would have resonated with the, the flower. So I think, yeah, there is an intense um, memory there somehow, with, with women especially, yeah. 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 It's, it runs really, really deep, definitely. Yeah. And we don't know it because we're not, we're not looking for it because we, That's and then, I... no. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it, it's good because you start to feel 
your grandmothers come in. You start to feel your lineage come in, your and, and the different like your mother's line and, and your father's line. Um, and in when like I've been on the fringes of watching the new age movements and the spiritual movements and everything for and the psychic movements for quite a while and um and just observing how detached from natural law and detached from the earth like always wanting to escape always wanting to go somewhere always wanting to connect with your spirits up there and the and the galactic um beings up there yeah. um there's a much more effective and efficient way of doing it yeah yeah exactly. calling your ancestors <laughs> yeah ex exactly yes yeah exactly you yeah. you be with your line and most people are running from their line because that's where the work is and what we forget is that our lineage runs into the galactic ancestry so that's they right. They are a place in our heart. We don't have to go outside of ourselves to connect with, with all of the weird and wonderful. Like we are weird and wonderful. It's in our heart. It is us. And as I work with a lot of people with their galactic ancestry, what I notice is when people have visitations and people have these experiences, if they come from outside of yourself, mm -hmm. It's usually not what you think it is. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing most of the time because they have the ability to present themselves in a way that feels familiar to you. But when you actually feel into your heart, you can feel if it's, if it's them or not. You can feel if it feels familiar or yeah. not. So the stronger relationship you have with your ancestry, you have with your ancestors both underneath your feet and within your heart, you are naturally walking with an army and you have nothing to fear. You have complete trust with yourself, with the universe and all of the questioning stops because there's no need to, to have all the questions of, am I on the right path? Is this my mission? Um, what am I here for? Because you just know it and you know it in your heart. And it's because we put ourselves outside is when we lose um, focus because we have no idea what game we're actually playing in this world and but our ancestors and our our body it knows that's a good point i've personally been through all that as well like it's so confusing it is it is very confusing but um when you connect to yourself, like you said, because this is what the this is what the original peoples of the lands always did. They always connected to you know the spirits within them, around them, like you know, because they understood like Mother Earth is a spirit. She's sentient. She's living. Everything is living. Like you said, even your phone is living. You know, yeah. once you connect to those things, I mean, not necessarily your phone, but you know, like the spirits are trying to actually guide you you know or your ancestors you know the ones that are always looking out for you because they their blood obviously runs through your blood so i mean and we are essentially 80 80 90 percent water so we got to think like we are our ancestors you know that is the core thing to remember so yeah like I understand because it is it can be difficult especially someone like me look I've got ancestry from my mother's side and my father's side which are two completely different because my mother is Indonesian and my father is Turkish I mean in one sense of course it is easier to understand because there is a very um, definite um, like cultural difference but in another sense, it gets diluted, so it can be very difficult for me to discern sometimes because of these two very differing lineages, you know. But ultimately, the body knows, like you said, the body knows, and and your heart knows where, where to go, where, like what what's best for you, you know. So I think that it comes back. To our bodies like we got to listen to our bodies yeah yeah absolutely it it is our library and it is the earth which is the library it holds all of the information um we just um we're 
we're taught in school and everything and the way that everything is constructed where we're taught not to not to listen to something because you know sometimes I think maybe it's because it's so simple mm. like we try to complicate it we try to make it something that has to be hard because that's a program a condition but um it's it's part of it's just part of the journey yeah and that's okay we if if you figured it all out truly then you wouldn't be here yeah exactly yeah we're all learning here yeah definitely yeah okay. um, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I think because you you really dig into the um um the natural law, like you said, you know the the natural law that all the um, ancestors of the land understood, which I I also really I'm, I'm on that same sort of path as well because. I really feel like that that is where where it's at because um, all the truth is there like that I mean that that is where we can get empowered and see beyond the illusions of you know the the false reality that we get taught into you know in, in schools and you know by politicians I mean it's not the real reality it's not what we're Born here to do, you know. Just we 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 are here to discover, like you said. Like we got to discover ourselves. We don't have to listen to people, you know. I mean, of course, there are people like you know yourself that are guiding people. Absolutely, definitely. But it's not about just taking in from only your perspective, you know. Like we got to we got to understand how we experience things in the body. So and respect mother earth you know because she she is part of us we're her children and we can't like we're we're she's learning as well you know i feel like she's learning as well and she is very patient like you said you know she i mean you think about all the natural or all the not natural disasters sorry all the man-made disasters like the oil spills and you know all the fukushima and all that stuff when you think like well how 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 does she sustain? How does she survive? How does she? How is she able, you know, such severe attacks to just be still unconditionally there for us, you know? And that's what it is. That's 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 what I feel like. What the divine feminine is. You just she just is. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just do you prefer to attack her or to connect with her? You know. <laughs> To come out of the yeah the thinking mind and just connect I think yeah, I believe <laughs> yeah completely um she is divine she is sacred she is uh, it is a feminine planet but it's it's so perfectly balanced between the masculine and the feminine um and you know with like grandfather son is more of the masculine reflection at the moment in this world and here being more of a feminine reflection as this world because we're we're here to learn the flow of it we're here to learn how how water holds earth we're here to learn how all of the elements interact and how that how the magic that we've we've forgotten that we we are for whatever reason it's not really the point anymore um trying to figure out um who did this and why this and blah 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 um it's like you don't have to play in that world of blame and of war and of of anger you if you can move through that within yourself mm -hmm. um it's not a battle of the masculine and the feminine it's about unifying the two um within ourselves and the masculine and feminine is it's just straight out reflection of the dualistic reality that that we live in that we chose to explore to learn and to to reduce things into a smaller form so that we could see how it played and then um, follow the natural wave of it going back into into one and 
um, you know, there's there's a lot of misconception and there's a lot of misdirection um, when you start putting your energy into other people's world worlds and worldviews and perceptions of reality. Um, you get lost along the way, um, allowing others to put their perspective as your perspective. Um, and you can take all of this or you can leave it all. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is a big part of how we get a governance and how we get these gurus and all this stuff it's it's people putting their power outside of themselves the divine feminine is a very big missing link which is why it was or is on the rise yeah. um divine feminine rising um it's because that part of ourselves is the grace it is the underlying strength um like the trunk of a tree that is immovable that holds the wisdom that holds the space and that is the thing that we are remembering um we went through an eight year period it ended two years ago um of the rise of the feminine we're actually going through the rise of more of the masculine in the sense that more attention is being put onto it from our brother and sister planetary bodies and so that's why right at the moment we're two years into a specific cycle where um like have you noticed the most coverage that people the most thing people that are getting coverage right now are are people who are really in there i'm the king of the world i'm a god of this world like have you noticed how it's it's, it's being amplified and it's being pushed out because they are really experiencing this world as they are the rulers of it. Yeah. And that's, that's why this is highlighted right now. Yeah, I think that's that's the negative ego, don't you think? That's like the... It's definitely um, not helpful for everyone. No. Um, <laughs> it's a um, identity that we cling on to, you know? Like, I mean, I'm... Yeah. yeah. We just think that, or we, or actually we get programmed to think because in school, everything's so competitive. So we always point out the differences rather than accept that, um, you know, in a, in a proper learning environment, when one person gets it, the whole group gets it. So it's not a competition thing, you know, it's like a, and then we can broadcast this, like as a planetary thing when one person gets it everybody gets it more or less you know we are a collective and it doesn't mean that we have to um agree with um other people's intentions or you know whatever but ultimately we are a collective and yeah there there are boundaries within that of course but we are the same species, you know, so the, the ego thing, it has to go, it does, because I think that, yeah, it is just, it's like an identity, polit politics, you know, like, it's just trying to war against everyone, but, but we got to come out of that, like you said, you know, it's a dualistic thinking, it's, yeah, it's something that, um, I don't know how it will be solved, but I think the more that people will become empowered in themselves, the less they will have to identify with things because they'll just be, they'll just be, it won't matter, you know, it won't matter who's who, it, it's just how you are, how everyone is, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And they're, they are literally representing just an extreme version of something that is still playing out in all of us. Otherwise it wouldn't be there. Otherwise we wouldn't be putting our energy into it, whether you're agreeing with it or you're against it, you're still feeding it. Yeah. Um, so whatever's triggering you, um, you focus on why you focus on what's the emotional attachment. You focus on, on why it's, it's bringing up such, such reactions and start getting to the root of it start getting to like why like why it's there like trump doesn't piss off everyone um yeah. bill gates doesn't piss off everyone uh pissing off a lot of people but um <laughs> it, you know 
he's a prime example and this is just my opinion completely my opinion um at this present moment which changes um <laughs> he is definitely going through a um period of believing that he he rules the world yeah and he's trying to highlight that with everything that he has right now and you can agree with him or you cannot and you can and but he's we're still feeding it we're still watching what he's doing like that's you putting your focus into his world and it's literally holding it in stasis um rather try to you know it's as corny as it sounds send him like love from a place of love for another human um and a big thing that and my beautiful friend Sharissa um has been talking about this this week especially of like um and she's an elder she's an indigenous elder to this um this continent and um you know we have to start forgiving we have to start forgiving ourselves we have to start forgiving each other because this is part of the healing um and once we do that within ourselves we don't need someone to highlight it so forcefully within ourselves um us starting to lose more of our freedoms and our sovereignties and mandating certain things and all this kind of stuff um it's highlighting what was already happening underneath it was it was always it's always been happening on an energetic level we are just starting see it happen now um and our attention needs to go there and we have to start healing it within ourselves and that will have that ripple effect outwards um it's much easier said than done um but it's kind of like we're all getting sent to our rooms right now and we're having to contemplate and think about what we've created together yeah yeah i think yeah now that's what you said especially about um you know bill gates and how everyone's focusing their attention and i think that that is very vital what you said actually because like if I, that is someone else's world and intention, but like, what are you doing about it? Like, what, what's, like, what do you want anyway? It doesn't matter what other people are doing. I mean, of course, it, I mean, you can look at it from the point of view where um, there are, I mean, there are things and intentions that are very negative and, you know, like moralistically, most people would agree with, but um what do we want out of this? You know, it does come back to like expressing the anger, expressing, you know, like all those ugly emotions, but then coming back to forgiveness, because once you do realize that what's happening is coming to the surface and a lot of people are understanding now more and more, and then you, you gotta like to come to that place of forgiveness, you, you kind of, you just let go of the, the anger that you've got inside for, um, you know, whatever it would be, like the system or the, you know, politician or whatever, because that can become like a negative cycle in you and then you just feed that energy again, like you said. So for you to move from that, you just just release it basically and then, you know, in, in whatever way you feel is best, like literally get angry and go, go out and, I don't know, <laughs> scream in the jungle or whatever. Like it, it needs to be released. Like it is, you know, it is bad. Like, but then once you release it, don't give your energy back to that all the time. Like it is happening. It's good to be aware, yes, but not constantly in the state of helplessness because that's what happens. When you when you when you get stuck in other people's worlds, you know you're like oh, but that's that, that's you know it's leaving you from creating. Mm-hmm. We're all creators, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, we yeah, all we- have that, which is good, but we all also can create something, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, like we all have to take responsibility for everything that we have created within ourselves, whether that was put upon us or we have generated it um, from ourselves, whether that be from here or past or future lives or all, it doesn't matter where from, if it's there, it's there. Um, but that's why I focus so much on helping people to 
broaden their perspective and focus on their intuition because you can't access your intuition if you've got blocks to your own ability and capacity to love yourself, to love others. Um, and it forces people generally <laughs> to start going through those layers because underneath those layers is a heightened sense of um, awareness, heightened sense of perception, heightened sense of, of love, heightened sense of observation. Um, because that's the human body um, has been limited for such a long time that this is, you know, all of the evolutionary processes and all of the prophecies and all of the, um, all of the work and everything. It's, it's to open ourselves back up from just believing that we are matter and it's opening ourselves back up to allowing that other part of ourself to have as much attention as the, the matter part of ourselves and acknowledge that both coexist together um, with everything in between <laughs> and when we start to and you know they say it is the more feminine aspect of ourselves yeah. um, that that deep um, intuition but I know just as many masculine men who are just as intuitive um, and as just as sensitive um, and a lot of the time it's just they've had to they've learned how to survive and thrive in this world through other means um, but when it comes to the divine feminine and coming to opening up ourselves um you know the the masculine is more um gonna go out there and i'm going to achieve and i'm going to direct and we're, we're, um, our energy in a specific way and it's more that fight or flight when it's in it's more um kind of primitive form of masculine yeah. um but when that evolves into um through self-nourishment, self-nurturing, um, you know, it's weird. I like, cause I studied the feminine and, and everything for such a long time. Um, and then I had a son Hi. and what I realized is that especially like if you're ever on a playground and you want to understand what the masculine and the feminine is, look at how little girls and little boys interact um, from very young age what i've noticed is that males are way more sensitive <laughs> and they're way more um they're way more quick to cry they're way more quick to express themselves emotionally and little girls um have an edge <laughs> they, have, they have this um yeah this edge and it seems like it's more of a psychological strength um and the men the, the little boys have this more of a physical uh direct approach whereas the female the little girls will usually like they know how to strike when they need to um but and if you don't know what I'm talking about go hang out with a bunch of kids um yeah. and you'll know what I'm saying um yeah the, the little girls yeah they're a bit more yeah <laughs> yeah and so what we believe is like is the divine masculine divine feminine which is what we're taught in our very new perception of that through the last especially five years through spirituality teachings and um social media and influences and all this kind of stuff when you get to the root of it it's really different um we the the feminine um i see has the patience and the persistence and the strength um more so than the masculine if you want to put them into categories and again they they can shift and change in all their different colors yeah. um but those are the elements that is on the rise the the 
the patience, the persistence, that inner strength, that inner knowing, like that is the feminine. That is what we are trying to remember right now. Um, and then when we have that, it's this beautiful dance between the two, um, which creates this unification between the two. It's kind of like they're, they're never together, they're never separate. Um, and it's this beautiful um, combination of them dancing in all these different moves rather than it having to be this separate experience of the divine feminine is rising and then the divine masculine is rising. Um, that I feel is being orchestrated a lot from our like planetary involvement, involvement um, on the collective. Mm -hmm. But when you go from your internal experience um it's it's different to the way that it is being marketed oh yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah because i guess you're kind of pointing at the new ages and that there is a lot of yeah uh, misconceptions there's not a lot of it's i mean there are really good um really really good po like starting points in the new age but they're sort of like um they they're not like deep connections you know with with the self with with what 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 is being shown it's it's sort of so, so you know like very superficial sort of just on the top surface level of what is a deeper connection like when you were talking about the rose for example there is a very deep understanding like the depth is what you want not just not just like looking or um having a rose you know it's, it's quite different to like actually digging into the roots of something to connect with something to have the patience and just stillness like you said you know that that is exactly what and it is a dance it's a flow it's like a you know, like a holistic thing. It's not, it's not about sides, you know, it's not a polarity thing. But I, I do believe there is, <laughs> just because um, for centuries, for aeons, you know, there has been a male way of looking at things on this planet. Mm. But the female has been left behind, but it is coming back, you know, just all those um, elements that you're talking about is coming back. In, into you know men which which is actually when we can um start saying yes changes are happening when we can see it in you know males and and the female sass and all that stuff you know because we think oh the divine feminine's like oh just really submissive and allowing things to you know whatever like just let like being passive about things because that's what kind of is what's shown as well like just and, and being really um superficial about things just having i mean a very shallow understanding of what a female is which is you yeah know, and she has like those warrior aspects those sassiness which is important you know like yeah yeah completely. um i feel like a lot of the the masculine driven patriarchy that we're seeing right now is birthed from a lot of trauma from a lot of men being separated from their dads through intergenerational trauma of their dads having to leave for war or their dads having to tr like go to another like um, land or like yeah. we're actually dealing with more trauma rather than um, the, the patriarchal system is based off a lot more trauma rather than this um this evil thing that just doesn't um, the reality is it just doesn't fit with us anymore yeah that's it like, that it doesn't doesn't fit. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it doesn't fit. and um what we're noticing now is a lot of men are, are definitely healing those parts of themselves through connecting with their dads more and connecting with their the masculine elders within their own lives um yeah so it's it's healing and we ask like i remember reading somewhere um that the original yogis were female and then there were um 
and then it was made illegal for women to practice yoga. Um, the the females have always been the ones that carry the wisdom through the line. Also, the males definitely. Um, but the the females were the ones the that were the container for the entire family, which meant that they held the the seed of of that family and passed it on through their actions, through um, providing, through sharing, through through um, interaction and and learning together. We passed that off, and like definitely, stay at home moms were have been definitely. Um, suppressed and mums are more encouraged to go back to work much quicker um, but what I notice with mums that are like are, have the opportunity um, to stay home they're they have the ability to pass on a lot of wisdom and a lot of tradition that as a society we've taken for granted and we're at that tipping point where we're starting to acknowledge we actually need that stuff because that is the thing that's missing. Yeah. And that's the thing that's coming back. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too, because I think, um, yeah, that the male thinking, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having that, um, within you. I mean, it's natural. We, we think, but, it's just the overanalyzing things is where we got stuck, I think. Which it's seen in the science field as well. You know, you said something about matter. I mean, we are matter. Science, you know, as of right now, says that we are matter. And the dark matter, they can't, they don't know what it is. So that tells you as much. It doesn't matter what sort of level of scientist you are. If you realize that we are matter and there's dark matter and you don't know what it is, so why <laughs> why do you claim or i mean not that they are claiming but why should we think um that we know everything you know it's not the reality what's dark matter <laughs> and we're 96 percent. i think it's 96 percent dark matter it's not even a small number you know so that's how much we don't know <laughs> Well, the matter in our body is only 1% of our body. Everything else is space and they don't know what's there. But that's that's where all the information is. That's all where, where the wisdom is. We just haven't had eyes to see it and we haven't had the technology to, to prove it. I personally believe that they do have that technology and not using it. But anyway, um, you know, I mean, like, because... Pardon? Yeah. No, I was just going to mention Tesla. I mean, like, <laughs> there have been people that... <laughs> have understood <laughs> free energy and what, what that dark matter is and how to <laughs> connect to that within us. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it's been suppressed and maybe it was not the right time or whatever, but there are things that we are capable of doing, you know, if we just, we just, we give up the negative ego, basically. You know, I, re I, I really feel that, you know, because you, you're into energy and you understand that. But there's no limit to energy, is there? There's nothing. Nope. And that can be really unsafe for someone. That, like, the mentality of limit can actually feel really unsafe for a lot of people if they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the it's kind of like they get pigeonholed and it's kind of like they get backed up against a wall and they don't know what to do and then that's part of their evolution they create a world where they feel safe um, and they can't get out of that and that's that within their own liberation within themselves to break their own shackles um, but that's that is the a big dis-ease within the mental plane across the collective um, especially at the moment and that's what we're breaking um, because even though we're being sent to our rooms and we're in our homes um, that doesn't mean that we are stuck and that doesn't mean that we are limited um, if anything like and I've noticed this with my clients um, and people that I've been like seeing around is <coughs> they they're um, yeah they're all of their other 
their senses are getting a lot more stronger their intuition is spot on their dreams are so vivid people are having a lot of lucid dreams people are having a lot of messages delivered in dreams um, people's sensitivity is heightening right now which is what we need to discern what fits with us and what doesn't fit with us um, and that's where the magic is like that's where the self-inquiry and exploration that's where that is um, and us having to not have to interact and um, be in these experiences where we're having to battle with others or try and figure out how to exist with others um, in a very physical sense we've been forced to figure out how to be with each other in other ways um, every time so I've got a like a course running at the moment which was only supposed to be three months but because of everything it's gone on for much longer wow. um, which is incredible because um, it was in-person training for it's called universal energetics and it's in-person training oh, to yeah. yeah to help learn um, energy yeah and and working with people with energy uh, from an energetic perspective um, and to just comprehend it a little bit more. And um, I switched it to um, an online call every week just while we're in isolation just to ensure that how, like just to check in to see how everyone's going. 75% will always be really good and 25 will be um, not good. Um, and it changes every single week with the people like who fits into whatever category going through the waves of what we're experiencing at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's, it has helped a lot of people to address a lot of underlying things um, because they've haven't had that stress of that constant interaction with people um, in a physical sense all the time. Yeah. so there's going to be a lot of positive that comes out of this and obviously a lot of uncomfortable and confronting situations mm -hmm. um but we we have the choice of where we direct our energy and the way that we direct our energy towards um what is happening at the moment yeah i definitely agree with that <laughs> Because ultimately, like, you know, what's that saying? It's like where, where you put your energy is basically what is yeah. created. Yeah. Where attention and energy flows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, definitely. yeah. I mean, or, I mean, yeah, empower, empowering, but also, you know, careful with what every moment we're thinking of because that's our energy thoughts are energy yeah. they really are and they create the reality that we're in um and that's why it's really important to take responsibility for what we're creating in this world and um even on a physical level you know taking it back to home like how is your everyday life what is the effect on the earth and environmental causes and where is your um a lot of people view like money as an amplifier as as a as a currency as a an energy like where is your your energy lying where is your money are you comfortable with the bank that you're with are you comfortable with the super and all the other stuff like this is where you start to 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 really assess where all of the threads of your energy are actually going right now like are you in a battle with someone and or like is there an unresolved um, agreement or a triggering situation that you have not addressed? Like this is actually the perfect time to be going into this stuff and the world's throwing it in our face anyway. Like it's, we can't run away from this. No, this is like a realignment um, um, period where we just, yeah, <laughs> reassess what's important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, I, you know, I, I'd really like to talk more, but I think that I just realized it's nearly three. So. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I loved how we met in Uluru and yeah. like I think we would link up later on. Just gonna just like, just see 
that's kind of like the beauty of of Uluru as well like um you're able to make these really like soul connections and you're kind of like I'm there and like, okay it's the right time to go into it we'll just go over here and just look over here <laughs> it's pretty amazing how that works I know right it's like a major vortex or, or portal Uluru she's like a yeah really big energy center the heart yeah. Of, yeah I was there um this in January so a couple of months ago yeah and I was um, filming a documentary with um the, a woman that I work with and uh, talking about indigenous and non-indigenous and how we work with um work with the land with with energy um how to bring a lot more respect um in our work um especially when people are raised not in their culture and and with a disconnection to the land um as a guardian rather than an owner um we tend to not respect it to the way that it clearly deserves um so yeah it'll be a really great documentary once it's edited and out and everything and um i had an opportunity to um we went to king's canyon and um we went past the what you call well what they called the the fake uluru <laughs> um and yeah there's another um extraordinarily sacred space um, that when you're driving past it you're like is that all that's not all like, like how is there another how do you not know about this wow um western world calls it mount connor but it's actually a um a very very sacred um space which when there was um when white people came into the area um actually destroyed a lot of the sacred mm -hmm. um the sacred spaces there so that it wouldn't be classified as um a culturally significant place mm -hmm. and um we were able to um connect there in a way that um felt so familiar and really listen to what was happening with communities and what was happening there and um and i hope that it's um translated within the documentary but um yeah we were able to get firsthand um conversations with communities about what's actually happening there and the amount of fracking that's going on around Uluru um, at the moment and will continue to do so because we do not that it's not being televised um, and so all stuff is happening in the backyard but we don't actually realize that so the focus was a lot to do with water um, and how you know for example if they frack this particular place which is where they have gotten approval to um do that very close to uluru um, it goes into the only water supply for all of the communities around there so um as of like said before like you know we're kicking up a stink because some of our liberties and freedoms have been taken away for a very short amount of time but we have to, we can't see what's literally in our backyard. We we this stuff has been going on for such a long time, and the the whole point of waking up is to actually see what is happening right in our backyards. What's happening with our bodies? What's happening um, in our world? Like this is the spiritual experience we've been calling in. This is the spiritual experience we've been we've been like trying to do through our self evolution. It's it's waking up to what's actually happening in our world right now um it's not about going off into into the ascended masters and to all these other um things that are outside of ourselves it's like having a human experience is the spirit, spiritual experience and yeah we got some really intense um first-hand knowledge of what's actually happening on our continent and you know it's it's really confronting 
Um, and it's no wonder why everyone distracts themselves with all this stupid shit, because the reality of where we are is, is really confronting. Um, so yeah, um, I'll let you know when that is all edited and it's out. But um, I'll definitely watch that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, um, it's, yeah, the point is, is that, you know, everyone's trying to ascend, everyone's trying to like go in from a third D to a five D reality and all this. But the point is to actually descend back into our bodies. The point is to, to, to be here. This is the experience. Being human is the experience and within the human experience is everything. So, um, yeah, that's why I try to, um, I try to share that whenever I get to speak to someone, uh, especially <laughs> being broadcast um just to kind of bring it back to what's real and what's no matter how sensitive and energetic and like all the energy work you do and everything like that like it has to has to be in here it's it's not i'm not like you don't go somewhere to to fix that land to fix what's going on it's like no no the land can do it the guardians of that land can do it you start with yourself you start with your own backyard and we've all been called back to this land right now and there's a reason for that um and it's 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 because we need to actually witness and and put our energy into handing this land back over to the guardians that are here to look after it and and we do fall under that category as well um but we are part of a of a thread getting this land back from a colonial state back into the natural law um, back into the way that this land can function without the intervention and we work with it rather than think that we are better than it and put our own our own um godlike sense into it so it's not like i need to share that <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It has to be. It has to be that way. It ca it can't be any other way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you. So yeah. And thank you for having me on. It was really amazing to speak to you and to connect with you again. Um, yeah, it was really great. Yeah, I always love talking with you because yeah, I just I think we we're very much. Um, well, we resonate with each other, so there's something there, and I would love to speak with you again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you and, so much. And also your documentary, please, um, you know, share that because I, I want to know more about what you experienced. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, for updates and everything, um, via my website, sarahbader.com, um, also my Instagram and things. And, and if you want to, um, join the weekly meditations, it's called ancient minds and, um, universal energetics. If you want to learn more about, um, how to work with energy more, uh, responsibly and respectfully, um, yeah, you can join that as well. Okay. Perfect. Yes. And I'll put the links on the, on the interview for you. Yeah. So easy for everyone awesome. <laughs> all right thank you take care it was nice to talk to you <laughs> really you too yeah have a good weekend by the way yeah you too <laughs>